All right, our first item is a request for approval of the ARPA subcommittee allocation recommendation for the Health Department additional needs for 2022 and beyond. Alan Howes, Wes McCain, and Kathleen Von Atchen are here to present. I don't know who's taking it away first, but jump right in. Good evening, Commissioner. This is Alan Howes, Assistant County Administrator. I'll maybe get us started here and then hand it over to Kathleen Von Atchen, our CFO, and Wes McCain from the Health Department. Uh, so this is a funding request uh, coming through for the ARPA dollars on the county side. And uh, just as a quick uh, uh, on the process here, so the ARPA subcommittee, um, which Commissioner Markley chairs, um, has looked at or continues to look at the allocations for ARPA as those requests come through specifically around COVID uh, in this case, and then make those recommendations for funding. Uh, those are then uh, provided to the standing committee. Um, and if, should the com standing committee decide to move forward uh, with those recommendations, then they go to full commission for, uh, for authorization. So that's kind of the process here. So the, the ARPA, stand, ARPA committee uh, has looked at this funding request and has, uh, has moved to move it forward to the standing committee. Uh, so that's what we bring with you uh, tonight. I, I will just sort of be direct about it. I think there was also an issue uh, with the agenda and the resolution uh, not being attached to this um, in the agenda item. Um, so I'll ask Misty Brown, maybe she can kind of clarify or weigh in on that. Um, and so as we go through this discussion here this evening, I wanted to give you the information uh, and then get the uh, determination of the committee as to how they uh, would like to proceed with this, um, given that error. Misty or legal, anything you want to add to that? Or Susan, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I missed what the error was. Misty and I were actually discussing something else. Okay, uh, that the resolution for the funding was not attached to the agenda item itself, so we don't actually have a resolution. Um, okay, um, I think that with a vote um, or with a motion that's clearly defined um, to uh, approve it, um, we can draft a resolution that matches the motion later on. This is Misty Brown, right. Chief Counsel. And I would just echo what Susan said and what we discussed. You know, there is a draft resolution that if it does advance to the next level, that we would attach that resolution to be at the full commission meeting. Questions on that before we dive into the presentation? Anyone? Okay. Let's forge ahead. All right. Yeah, good evening. This is Kathleen Von Etchen, the Chief Financial Officer. Can you see my my the presentation on the screen? We can, yes. Okay. So we've worked together with the Health Department as well as the ARPA subcommittee, as um, Alan mentioned, and uh, and uh, this constitutes the additional needs. Ah, okay. So just to, just to give you an update, um, the American uh, Rescue Plan Act as an update, the, um, our US President Joe Biden signed into law 1.9 trillion in American Rescue Plan Act funds for as of 2021. And that was uh, passed or signed on March 11th. And the UG as part of that act was allocated in state and local fiscal recovery funds, 87 million dollars in ARPA funds, of which 55.383 million is for the city of Kansas City, Kansas funds, and 32,132,000 for Wyandotte County. So since then, since then, the commission has made a number of allocations, and so I wanted to kind of walk uh, through this chart before we proceed. Um, here you'll see the large number, the 87.5 million, of which 55 million is for the city of Kansas City, Kansas, and 32 million for Wyandotte County. And since then, the commission has approved a variety of items. First off, as part of the uh, as part of the 21-22 budget, 
um, a revenue loss replacement calculation was in, included in the respective funds of KCK and Wyandotte County. And that, that's what this column down here is. 31.1 million was calculated on the Kansas side, Kansas City, Kansas side, and 11 million on the county side. And um, then there was an immediate needs. Um, so that left, left um, for other ARPA categories, 24 million on the city side and 21 million on the county side. On August 28th, uh, or 26, that um, a number of immediate needs was were adopted by the full commission, and those immediate needs constituted funding mainly from the ARPA category, other categories in this green area, but a small portion of the immediate needs was also paid for from revenue replacement. So, the those portions are listed under that column here, and, and split out accordingly. Um, tonight, we're really going to be focusing on the county side because the public health department is a county fund. Um, but um, so on the next slide, we're going to focus on the county side. We're just giving you an overview of all the dollars. So um, as a result of, um, so that's how these were split out. Um, in addition, um, at the same time on, on August 20, uh, 26th, uh, in addition to the immediate needs, another 1.85 million was allocated for housing assistance. And then subsequently on September 30th, the commission approved uh, what is called the UG employee COVID mitigation plan, which was adopted by the full commission that totaled $1 million of which 660,000 was for Kansas City, Kansas funds and our employees uh, working respected to Kansas City, Kansas and 340,000 is estimated for the, the city, uh, the county side. So given these, all these funds which have already been approved, um, the remaining balances on the Kansas City, Kansas side for ARPA is 22,000 or $22.1 million. And that's the allocated amount as of uh, the middle of December. On the county side, it's $10.6 million. That's still available and unallocated. Now, as you know, there, there, as you see up here, there's quite a bit of revenue loss replacement money that's, that was allocated in the operating funds. And based on the adopted budget of 21 and 22, we, we calculated that there are still revenue loss, uh, revenue loss or revenue replacement monies that have not been allocated. And those are all sitting in the city general fund. And at the moment, that's estimated to be six, uh, $9.6 .6 million. So these big um, orange numbers are the amounts that have not been allocated so far. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Commissioner Markley. So the the nine point six million that is was that part of what was set in put into the fund balance? Yeah. So right now that money is the estimated amount that has not been allocated um, or spent as of the end of twenty twenty two, resulting from all the this green column here. Yeah. Okay, so it's what's left over. That's right. Okay. And that's just in the fund balance and that is we allocated however, when or if and when we'd like, correct? Right, so that is um, because uh, the, the special feature of the revenue replacement is that treasury allows you to spend it on government services, which is a very flexible um, you know, criteria. So um, we're including it here because uh, we want all of the commissioners to understand that this money still is available and could be evaluated as part of the conversations that the ARPA subcommittee are having. Okay, so if we could come, quote unquote, combine and use the, the fund balance left over with the unallocated ARPA funds, correct? You that, could. That's, that's what I got from what you said? That's right. Okay, thank you. 
And I, I should put a caveat, of course, this number is an estimate based on budget. Of course, um, as we, um, you know, finalize the fiscal year 21 numbers and, and then revise the subsequent budget, this number will change. Okay. I don't, yep, I was gonna say, I don't see any more questions. So I think you're safe to go. Right, so as I mentioned, um, tonight's uh, focus is really on the county side of the equation. So all of these numbers are still the same as what I showed before. I did wanna point out that um, the request is coming from the public health department specifically. And so we thought maybe you might like to know of the total immediate needs that were adopted on the county side on August uh, 26th, um, the total immediate needs on the county side was $8.8 .8 million. And of that amount, the public health department received 7 million. And they, it, um, they, they utilized these funds for a variety of public health needs of which um, these are the various ARPA categories. 5.3 million was for specifically public health needs, 700,000 for negative economic impacts, uh, oh, the, this one's a disproportionately um, impacted communities. Uh, this is a typo here of 800,000 and then some 200,000 for ARPA grant support. And uh, the immediate needs report that's on our uh, ARPA website has all of the individual, the many um, individual programs specifically listed out with an explanation of each of the programs. These are all just lump sums. So, um, so now this is um, getting to the request of the public health department and um, it's totaling $3.43 million. And there are two slides here that specifically list out all the individual programs. And at this point, I would like to ask uh, Wes uh, McCain from the public health department to step up and talk about each of these items. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. I'm uh, Wesley McCain from the Public Health Department. Um, just real quick notes before I, uh, as uh, quickly as I can, go through these items. <clears throat> um, overall, um, you know, it, as you look at this list, um, there's kind of these different categories of items in here. Um, one of the categories is uh, core COVID response. Um, you'll see things like uh, COVID project management, testing, contact tracing, uh, quarantine and isolation, uh, uh, communications, um, and maybe, maybe some others as well. Um, those were originally much larger requests. Um, as we've learned more about FEMA um, and about what FEMA will cover, um, we've reduced those requests because a lot of those items are eligible um, for FEMA funding. And there's an item in front of the commission on Thursday about this. Um, but we still have them in here because as of right now, we, um, we have assurances and understand that FEMA will cover those costs through the end of March, but we do not know what's going to happen after that. And we would like we were anticipating and have sort of uh, structured this to be um, the second and final request that the public health department would make to the commission for ARPA. Um, and so we wanted to put some, uh, some contingency funding in here for these items past the end of March. Of course, if FEMA extends that, then we will uh, not use this funding. We'll use funding that we can get reimbursed for, um, and we will return this money to the to the ARPA pot to be redistributed. Uh, so that's a portion of, of the costs. Um, another uh, element is there's a lot of this that is um, in line with uh, our first request, uh, which is about our chip. Um, we've, uh, you know, in speaking with the ARPA committee and, and the commissioners, you and your discussions, um, and us and our requests have pri prioritized advancing our chip uh, as part of the framework for how these um, for how these ARPA funds would be used. And so um, you'll see that throughout here. Um, hey, Wes, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, for the benefit of the public, maybe uh, not using an acronym and spelling out what chip is and our chip is our, th thanks, Alan. Our chip is our 2018 to 2023 community health improvement plan. Um, and it, uh, it 
prioritizes four areas of health improvement that are really focused on the social determinants of health, which aligns really well with the ARPA eligible uses, um, which uh, that, that act also was looking not only at, at uh, uh, COVID virus uh, mitigation, but also at the economic and social uh, recovery of communities from COVID, which aligned re really well with our CHIP. Um, and so those areas are violence prevention, safe and affordable housing, jobs and education, and access access to healthcare services. So you'll you'll see those those kind of categories reflected in that. That was an operating framework for our first request to the commission, and that immediate needs bucket, and that uh, continues with this. And, um, and Wesley, I might I might add just one more thing is that the community. Um, the CHIP, the Community Health Improvement Plan, one of its overarching goals is to improve our current um, health standings amongst the state, because right now we're, if not the one of the lowest uh, across all the counties, right? We are, yes. Yes, and, and um, it will be difficult, if not impossible, for us to, uh, to improve that until uh, if we don't make progress on some of those underlying factors that uh, help to uh, promote and support health, um, which include housing and ac access to living wage jobs and things like that. So the um, um, a lot of these you'll see continued in here. If it says continued, that means that we requested a portion of this funding and the immediate needs and the continued is an additional request. Um, almost always that means that we requested, uh, not always, but almost always it means that we requested two years of funding um, and that we're uh, requesting a third year of funding, which would take us through the, the end of ARPA, which is the end of 2024. Um, and uh, a final a final thing is that we're we're going to be sub awarding a lot of this funding, even though the health department is the uh, is the operating agency that will be receiving the funds. A lot of this money is being sent out into the community. Um, that's how a lot of our work. Um, on the social determinants of health and on uh, long-term health improvement and COVID recovery works. Um, we are not able, we don't have the expertise to do all the work. So we form very strong partnerships uh, with agencies and we uh, support them through planning and funding, uh, uh, communications, access to resources, um, things like that. So um, that is, and then the final, final thing is there are some items in here that are specifically for health department, for our clients, um, and for us to uh, support our clients more during this COVID uh, pandemic. And so I will mark those out as well. So I'll stand right now for questions. That's the overview. And then I'll kind of dig in briefly into each item as we go forward. I see there's a hand from uh, Commissioner Bynum. Commissioner Bynum, go right ahead. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Bynum at Large District One. Wesley, I'm. I want to make sure I understand uh, some of what you said early. If there is an item here that is potentially reimbursable to the unified government from another source, like FEMA, then you will go that route first. However. FEMA is only, we only have clarification from FEMA, for example, of things they are going to pay for or reimburse for through March of 22. So what you're seeking is to lock in uh, with these dollars that these needed functions will be funded one way or another. But if you get word that FEMA would reimburse something beyond that date, then you would go that route and that would free this ARPA dollar back up for other ARPA uses. It, did I say that right? You got it exactly right. Yes, okay, so it, it's, yeah, right. it's really a timing issue. Um, right. Yeah, it's really- and I it's get really, that. I mean, yeah. that's you know how things work right but i guess the tag along question to go with that is you you're asking for funding uh that takes uh ug public health and and your partners through the end of arpa um eligibility time and so if 
if let's say in 24, uh, we're still dealing with something and we get word late that FEMA is going to reimburse, what are we doing to our own ARPA timeline is the question. Mm. Are we uh, squeezing our our own timeline? I I don't believe we will. And that's uh, the reason I believe I don't believe we will is all of the items that are going to be FEMA eligible. Th those are there's a lot that we do will sub sub award and will last out. You know, we intend to have budgeted out through the end of 2024. But all the FEMA eligible items are are really items that you know, are going to be operative here in the next year. You know, I mean, things like COVID uh, communications, uh, contact tracing, those those items will, uh, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fortune teller, um, unfortunately, so I'm not, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the next year, but certainly I don't think that the FEMA will continue doing this kind of staging process. And, you know, we wouldn't be able to, to know how much I, I I think that there there will be time to be able to shift and adjust and, and that we won't be kind of playing this game with FEMA for the next three years. I, I think that'll be a little bit sooner than that. And if not, then I that'll be an interesting problem to have. But um yeah, so I I don't know a hundred percent, but I, I don't think that will be an issue. Okay. Well I appreciate it. It's fair enough. And Kathleen, I think that um is there a some ARPA rule that says it just has to be encumbered by the certain date, not necessarily spent, that helps us maybe not have a potential crunch like that? That's that's correct. Yes. Okay, thank you both very much. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Commissioner Markley. This question may have already been um, asked and answered, so I apologize. Are all of these items um, FEMA reimburse, uh, eligible for FEMA reimbursement? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm I'm trying to trying to pick like the drug misuse prevention coordinator. Is that currently being funded? So it that says continued. So we we did receive two years uh, of funding for that in the immediate needs request and are about ready to onboard um, a person uh, for that um, based upon the increase in overdose and uh, overdose rates in our county. And this that eighty thousand is for a third year to be able to provide uh, extended funding for that person to continue to work. So we've received part of the funding, and that eighty would be then to take us out to the end of. 2024. Okay. Just to, yeah, just to clarify, each one of these items, if it has continued at the end of it, it it means that it was started with immediate the immediate needs report and it's being continued in this. Okay. So the original, the your the first ask the health department came. This okay. I, I see where the continued. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we were, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um So uh, let's say FEMA. So the 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 testing and all the COVID related, those can be FEMA reimbursable or eligible for FEMA reimbursement, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Um, for instance, the testing and let's see the one that says testing and vaccine uh, yeah. Yeah, right communications here. there for uh, th uh, three hundred thousand dollars. That is. The, really the reason that's in there is, um, you know, we're, let's say we spend quite a bit of money, um, you know, getting word out to our community about COVID, you know, and then we, 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 you know, we spend it and then we get to April and FEMA is no longer going to be uh, reimbursing those dollars. We need a pot of money to be able to continue doing that work. And if we don't, we don't have accounts, uh, you know, that have a, big amount of money in them to be able to spend that. Um, and so we that's kind of when ARPA kicks in. It's like this kind of a little bit of this, I, I don't want to call it a game, but it's it's like a process where we want to prioritize FEMA for as long as we can, but we have to have some contingency in place in case FEMA says, and, and oftentimes we don't know until kind of right before the deadline or early 
before the deadline. And so it, these are really contingency funds and it's difficult to then go through this process to get accounts to have money in them to be able to pay our bills. So it, it is a little unusual, I know, but it is really, I think the, it's good to think of those as, as kind of safety contingency funds um, to be able to, to use that. And then, and then if, yeah, so. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, I mean, basically, because these needs will continue because the pandemic is still continuing, but FEMA reimbursement may stop at the end of March. So, you know, we still need to be able to meet those needs. Okay. Right. It has, and this might be a very premature question since we're just towards the end of January, has FEMA been any indication that they might extend past March? You know, as of, uh, we asked the state that on a call that Matt, Matt May hosts um, on Friday of this last week, and she said, I have no idea. So Okay. <laughs> so for last, last dot to connect. So these funds, this 3.43, won't kick in until after the end date of re uh, FEMA reimbursement, correct? Uh, no, they, this is, uh, this, these would be in effect, you know, immediately. It's for 2022 and beyond. Yeah. So a portion of them, Commissioner Salmon House, just kind of minister. So a portion yeah. of them that are, that are clearly, what we define as FEMA reimbursable, those would be sort of held and, you know, held back in a sense. Yeah. Other, other portions of this are, um, you know, would kind of kick in right away um, and would would not be they aren't so FEMA eligible or perceived to be FEMA eligible at this point uh, so those those funds would get uh, yeah. accessed and and go into motion more quickly if that makes yeah, sense. I, I just want to point out that the accounting the central accounting myself Wes and the grants managers are all looking at this very closely and keeping very close track of all of these expenditures we're making sure we have all the documentation so that we can seek reimbursement. It's very, you know, what you're seeing here is very summary kind of but um, information, but we're all, all over this and on top of it is my. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, a good thing I had asked or made, try to make that connection because I was seeing or viewing this completely different than what was explained and that that might have been just my my fault not really following so i'm very i'm glad that i asked that last question so thank you commissioner kane related question to this chart <clears throat> and i was asked this the other day is there a way that the health department can say this district's had so many shots and this district's had so many shots to separate the districts to see which one's got so many and which one doesn't. Is that possible from the health department? Yeah, we can break it down geographically. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know the level, if it could be commission district or zip code or something like that, but there's yeah. a way to provide a, a basic- zip, you know. zip code is fine. District is even better. And I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions before we move on? I'm not seeing any. So Wes, you can proceed. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to, I, I kept trying to tie, tie myself and make this short. So I'm, I'm going to make this as short, uh, short as I can. COVID project manager, um, that I think is fairly self-explanatory. We have a lot of different projects going on and have to be convened and kept on track. And that role has been very important to us. Um, the forgiveness of court fees of vaccinated, that's a project that was allocated uh, for one year and uh, the immediate needs and we're asking for a second year. That's a project, uh, a partnership with Brandy Bra uh, Brakovich from the municipal court uh, to be able to, it, two, two purposes, one to, uh, relieve people who have been vaccinated of a certain portion of their uh, court fees, and then also uh, to help them uh, get their suspended driver's license reinstated, which is really, uh, it's 
related to our workforce development strategies, trying to give people access to jobs. If you don't have a driver's license, it's more difficult to be able to get to a job. So it's a multiple purpose one, and we're um, enthusiastic about it and would like to get a second year of funding for it. Um, testing is another one. That's one of those FEMA eligible contingency funds. Contact tracing, we have burned through a lot of contact tracing dollars now um, that our approach has changed a little bit with that, with just the humongous number of caseloads. So our costs might not be quite as significant, but we, we burned through the first allocation of 200,000 very quickly. Um, so we'd, we would like some more with that. That's an, uh, so, so, something to note is contact tracing is not FEMA eligible for um, reasons I, I don't understand, but it's just not in the list. So um, we do need to have a pot of money for that. Um, transportation, assist, uh, uh, transportation assistance for UG PhD clients. By the way, that acronym stands for Unified Government Public Health Department. Um, that, uh, that is a, a service to our clients um, that we would like to put in place uh, during this time. It, it, that amount, we estimate, would fund free transportation door-to-door -door for health for all of our, a portion of our clients who need it um, from now until the end of 2024. Um, COVID quarantine and isolation, that's another one that we believe is FEMA eligible. Um, uh, that's a, one that's a bit on the line, but um, uh, we're working on that right now to, to get that short up, but that is helping people who are unsheltered uh, or who are unhoused who need shelter. Um, if they're COVID positive, they can't be in the same areas uh, as other folks who are sheltered. And so we put them in hotel rooms or other short-term rental units to be able to help them isolate until their symptoms resolve. Um, testing and vaccine communications, that's one of those FEMA eligible um, items uh, that is uh, contingency. Um, our medical officer, this is a continued one. Um, they, we asked for a year. Um, having that extra leadership has been very helpful for us during uh, during the pandemic, that's another person to be able to provide guidance and leadership to us. So that would take that, this role out until the end of 2024. Um, these next two are about substance abuse prevention. Um, these are, this is an item that uh, overdoses increased uh, in 2020 and 2021. Um, we have early data. We just, I just got dated in the last month that overdose, uh, there's evidence that overdoses uh, are Opioid overdoses in particular are increasing in Wyandotte County as well. Um, we have not convened and not had a program in this um, in the past. And so we, uh, this is a really excellent and actually somewhat urgent time uh, to focus on this issue. So it's uh, some implementation dollars for that project to be able to, to work with uh, clinics and others um, to be able to prevent and treat you know, the, uh, this issue. And then it's a third year of staffing for a coordinator. Um, and we got the first two years for that in the, in the first uh, uh, allocation. Um, Non-emergency medical transportation pilot. This is one that we've done a lot of work on in the community, pulling together healthcare clinics um, to be able to provide non, uh, not emergency room visits, but uh, transportation to our safety net clinics and uh, hospital uh, hospitals for non-emergency issues. Um, and we've developed partnerships. There's a funding uh, project from a uh, grant application from uh, the Kansas Department of Transportation that's out there um, for this. Uh, transportation access is one of the biggest issues that comes up when people talk about why they can't access health services. It's always in the top three. Um, so this would extend that. We're, we're hoping to match some funds that we got from uh, that we hope that we hope to get from KDOT to be able to extend this beyond uh, one year. That's what that is. Um, our mobile medical clinic. Um, we asked for the funding to provide for that clinic um, in our first uh, immediate needs request. Um, that's really exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it would allow us to take our services on the road. Allows us to go where place, places where people um, might have difficulty accessing services. Uh, for lots of reasons, age, transportation, income, anything like that. Um, proximity to the health department, they might live far, far, far out west and it might be difficult for them to get here. Um, that's a lot of work getting that set up. So we, we'd like to have a, a temporary staffing person to get that off the ground. That's what um, that coordinator salary is for on that. Um, 
education team. We have never had a health education team, um, but we started one during COVID because we were doing a tremendous amount on it. And we asked for that within uh, immediate needs for two years. This is the third year. Um, plus a little bit, we underestimated the, the salaries a bit on that. So it's a little bit of uh, the salaries for the first two years, but then also some marketing costs to be able to educate, not just about COVID, but about um, the items there as well. Um, our other health issues have not gone away and in some cases might've gotten worse during COVID. Um, so uh, we're really excited. We're actually in the hiring process for those uh, this week um, for, those, for, those, uh, for that team. So, which is really great. And then Health Equity Task Force. Um, Radix is the grant right now that funds it, but we started this during COVID um, to really work on health disparities that we were seeing in COVID, um, the African-American mortality rate, the increased case rates among uh, non-white uh, white populations. So um, that, that work uh, convenes and really spearheads a lot of our health equity work. And uh, we would like to fund that and continue that through the duration of the ARPA period to, be, to continue to work on our health equity strategies. It takes a lot of time um, and partnership, a lot of time to do it well. So it's two staff people to be able to coordinate with that committee and all of the leaders uh, who are part of that. Uh, next slide, Kathleen. Um, we have a CHIP coordinator. We, we have one staff person in our health department full-time who works on CHIP. Um, we would like another person to be able to work on uh, this expansion of this during the COVID recovery. Um, that's what 240 of that first request is. And then the ARPA coordinator is a continued one. It takes quite a bit of resources to get this, uh, get these dollars out administratively and things. And so um, that is a third year of that. Um, the telehealth pilot program, that, that actually pays for a, a lease for the Quindaro Community Center. Uh, where we have a, uh, it's all, that's the only cost for that. Um, and it's uh, one that we're still getting up and running and the partnerships are developing. It, it allows for um, moms uh, and families uh, up in the Northeast to be able to access telehealth maternal visits if they have difficulty getting the doctor. Um, these next two will be RFPs that we will submit. So, um, Unfortunately, it, it says Kansas Legal Services. We'll have to do an RFP for this. Um, we can't. Uh, it, there are other uh, potential agencies who, who will do that. So, um, and that's low income legal assistance. It's it's not only housing. It's housing, disability, Medicaid, family issues, employment issues. Lots of things that that people can find themselves in um, who, if they're low income and, and can't navigate, they have a very difficult time. Um, we heard that from our chip. It's very, very important. Lots of people said that that was a huge need for members of our community. Um, and then the bottom one as well, another, that one below it, housing navigation staff for individuals who speak Spanish in our community. Um, lots of housing dislocation during COVID. Um, because of lots of reasons and uh, people who primary language is not English, it's even harder for, for them to navigate those issues. And so um, that's an RFP. We're gonna find an agency to be able to do, to help uh, residents in the community on that. Um, the next four I mentioned are, are four areas of our community health improvement plan, our CHIP. Um, those agencies are really the, the backbones, I guess you could say of, uh, of our chip, um, they the, the, all of our partnerships and those sectors and spheres run through those agencies. We received two years of funding with the first one. This allows for a third year um, through through the end of ARPA. Um, and then Waco Public Health Corps. That is, I'm not going to steal the thunder of that because that's a next presentation. Um, but that's a really great opportunity. Um, very small amount of the total project cost is not covered under that that. Uh, award that we're seeking. And so this is uh, for some non-covered costs that we're requesting through ARPA. Um, and then these last two are about community health workers. And community health workers are really, really wonderful um, people who stand in between social services, governmental services, employment resources, and communities. Um, they're from the community that is being served, but they are experts in these systems. And so they really function as uh, navigators and people to walk alongside people who have difficulties getting the services. And it's a growing model that's been really helpful in lots of areas. Two of them here are uh, uh, maternal health. So helping uh, uh, women uh, navigate 
that as they're uh, having a child. Um, those will be stationed at the health department for that. And then the last one is actually a violence interruption program um, that Thrive, uh, which is a violence prevention initiative in uh, Wyandotte County led by a portion of KU has been working with KU Hospital to be able to interrupt violence by providing uh, trained experts uh, for people who are caught in cycles of violence where the victim then uh, becomes the perpetrator, you know, once they get out of the hospital and they continue a cycle of violence, they bring people who are trained and experts in this, who understand and have been a part of that in the past to be able to interrupt those. Uh, it's an evidence-based program that's been very effective. That partnership has taken a lot of time to set up. And, and so uh, that's for a third year of funding for that as well. So that I will, I know that's a lot. I apologize um, for how brief and high level that is, but um, I'll stand for questions on that. Questions? Anyone? I'm not seeing any hands. Is there another portion of this discussion team before I ask their public comments or anything from that world? Um, well, there's a three or four slides here that we you've seen before that generally talk about um, the um, how well the objectives the public health is, uh, department is pursuing in terms of not only these ARPA funds but the yeah, all funding sources and then what how they've been done. But at the end of the, the last slide talks about what we um, are planning to put into the resolution. So. Um, generally speaking, I want to mention that, um, you know, we're all, again, when we are looking at funding sources, we're prioritizing federal funding first, and then um, subsequently ARPA county or ARPA dollars. And if, um, if, if, if federal funding is not yet available, and if, and we'll use ARPA and county fund funding if federal funding is not available and if needed expenses are not eligible for reimbursement. So every attempt will be made to, um, to reimburse local funding through the FEMA public assistance program. <clears throat> Generally speaking, the public health uh, department's response to COVID has, has hit into these major expense categories again, testing, contact tracing, communications, community engagement, social services, and vaccination. Um, those are the key categories. And um, the, the response goal has been to, the, uh, to excel at core public health uh, functions, disease investigation, public education, ma mass uh, vaccination, and in, to ensure our response includes community and integrates health equity into decision-making. Um, they follow science even when it's difficult and they utilize every available resource to stop the spread. So um, they've had um, some response successes. We've had early testing, early creation of the health equity task force, uh, increased social needs in our response. They've utilized uh, health orders when necessary, supported local elected officials, and uh, we've made significant financial investment, set up various vaccination centers. So they've been very busy this past 18 or 24 months. Uh, I'm forgetting how long it's been now. So the, um, finally, I just want to make the key points in the resolution that uh, we actually have a drafted resolution. It would just fail to be uploaded into the uh, system, so you, you're not able to see it. But this resolution that's being reviewed by the legal department would include several items. First off, uh, back in September, uh, the commission approved $1 million for the UG employee COVID mitigation plan. It was adopted on September 30th. But the, the, the point is, is that resolution should have split the money between KCK and Wyandotte County because that's how the funds are allocated. So to do a little bit of a cleanup, we're inserting that language in this resolution so that it's specific, uh, specific enough for our, our federal reporting. So we're allocating 66% of the million dollars on the Kansas City, Kansas side and 34% on the Wyandotte County side. So this is not new money, it's just taking existing money that was allocated already and splitting it between the respective recipients. 
And then lastly, the resolution allocates uh, in county funds $3.4 million to continue the fight against the coronavirus and other ARPA eligible uses as we specified here in this presentation. So um, if you subtract out this 3.4, then you end up with uh, Wyandotte County money of uh, available of 7 million. Rather than the 10 that you saw earlier in the slide, it's now seven. And so the total ARPA remaining funds totals $29.3 million, not including the amount that's um, sitting in the city general fund of revenue replacement. That's This is purely the ARPA allocated funds that are available uh, with the, the approval of that resolution. Any questions? Commissioner Bynum. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is Commissioner Bynum at large district one and make a motion to approve the uh, proposed ordinance and resolution um, with the cleanup language for the COVID UG employee COVID mitigation plan that was previously adopted and the allocation of ARPA county side funds of 3.4 million to um, continue the work of the Unified Gov Government Public Health Department with regard to mitigating COVID-19. Commissioner Harold Johnson, second. I do have a motion and a second. I'll ask the clerk if we had any comments received from the public. We have not received any comments. Thank you, then. Any more questions from the commission? If not, roll call on the motion. Roll call, Kane. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Markley. Aye. Thank you very much, team, for your presentation tonight.